So let's begin with the first big story and what's really unfolded in Hyderabad and many parts of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana in the last 48 hours. 20 people have been killed in rain-related mishaps, 5 in Andhra Pradesh, about 15 in the state of Telangana after continuous rains have actually lashed through these states in the last three days. Lives have been thrown completely out of gear, while water logging and flooding was reported in Krishna and Karnool districts of Andhra. In Hyderabad, authorities had to issue advisory to people to remain indoors, even as rains are likely to continue for the next 48 hours. The visuals were indeed telling. Cars floating about, walls collapsing, power cuts for long hours as the citizens of Hyderabad also struggled to come to terms with what was happening around them. Now, also, according to the Med Department, rains were triggered by a deep depression over the west central bay of Bengal, leading to heavy rains across several districts. This depression itself seems to now be moving towards western India. But I want to take you through some of the visuals and stories that we have before we go across to our reporter life. With the streets of Hyderabad turning into fast-flowing rivers, a man was seen being dragged into this flowing flood water, unable to catch hold of anything to get himself out of this water. Bystanders were also unable to help, could only stand there and watch as he was swept away by the current. Imagine that in the old city of Hyderabad is where this happened. Let me bring to you another visual. Similar scenes were seen in Al Jubail colony and Falaknuma. Ghazi Emilat colony in Hyderabad, roads were completely flooded and a high influx of water flooding the streets. People had to run up to their rooftops, had to gather on rooftops to really save themselves. This has happened, this has happened in the city of Hyderabad. Let's get you another example of what we saw unfold in the city. The force of the flood water flowing through the streets of Hyderabad was so strong that we actually saw cars getting washed away. In the visuals that you will see right now, you can see a car and it literally looks like a toy car, but this is a real story, it's not a toy car. And it collides with two other cars after getting washed away. This happened in New Bowen Palli area of the city. Look at the way they're all colliding with each other, flowing about in that river, literally, that's flowing through the streets of the city. We also have visuals of the mayhem that was caused in Hyderabad's Shamshabad area. A lake barrier collapsed, leading to massive destruction in that area. The national highway, NH44, was completely cut off. You can see the water overturned buses and trucks that were on the road at that time. Such was the force of the water and the floods that were taking place. Flood water also, of course, entered buildings, entered hospitals. The wind visual that we got was from the Yashoda Hospital, located in the center of Hyderabad. Water completely flooding the parking lot of one of the biggest hospitals that the city really has. And then, of course, the lakes. The Telapur Lake in Hyderabad also overflowed, leading to its surrounding areas being completely flooded. Again, in that area, locals were uh, completely left stranded. In fact, overnight, about 600 people in the city had to be evacuated to safer locations and the battle really goes on. So, let's get you some more details. Shamit is joining me live from the city of Hyderabad right now. Shamit, what is the condition and you know what was the what was the extent of rescue and uh, safety evacuation that we were able to do today well it's very clear that uh, 15 people have lost their lives these massive rains have destructed the lives and the lives of the people of the hyderabad city as well as telangana and even in andhra pradesh where uh, five people have uh, lost their lives. In Hyderabad, if we see, uh, not only the 15 confirmed, but over three people till now uh, went missing. And uh, the authorities have launched search operation in different places like in Rangaradi, Rachar, Yacharam. And uh, in, if you take in Shamshabad, uh, one person went missing. And uh, in Bongiri rural, one, one person went missing, where one person was actually, uh, two went missing and one was actually rescued and uh, one is still missing. And in the heart of the Hyderabad old city, as you just were explaining uh, a minute ago, uh, a, a person was uh, washed away in the uh, flood water that was very near to the Charminar and is still missing. And it is yet to, say, yet to be said that, it is noticed that uh, a family of over four members are uh, uh, missing from the 
Mylar Deopalli area, which is the uh, outskirts of the Hyderabad city. And this is the situation uh, here in the Hyderabad. And uh, uh, till now, if we see uh, eight people have been uh, uh, crushed to death after, including a two months old uh, uh, infant baby after a huge boulder fell on their residence in, in, in Chandran Gutta area uh, in the Hyderabad city. And uh, if you just move ahead two kilometers away from that spot in, in Gahaganpad area, Three persons have uh, been died after uh, their roof collapsed on their residence uh, uh, while, while, while they were sleeping uh, uh, due to incessant rainfalls. And even in Ibrahim Patnam area, daughter and uh, her mother died and after uh, their roof collapsed due to these rains. And even the same kind of incident reported in Fulbach of the old city where uh, two people died uh, due to this uh, uh, incessant rains received and uh, the IMD department just now we have received a couple of minutes ago we have received statement from the IMD stating that today rains may be uh, uh, received uh, accompanied with uh, a thunderstorm and gusty winds may be received in few parts of Hyderabad as well as in Telangana but uh, tomorrow the situation will be normal this is what uh, uh, the statement being uh, uh, issued by the IMD department and uh, the authorities in are still trying to rescue few people, uh, a few families who were stranded in uh, low-lying areas, which, are, which from where we have reported in today in the uh, afternoon hours also in Ramantapur area, where the water, the pond level, uh, the water level in the pond has increased and uh, it has uh, uh, entered into the residences uh, uh, which are lying beside that uh, uh, lake and uh, over 1,000 families have been stranded there in that area and uh, the DRF teams uh, of GHMC have uh, uh, been uh, uh, using boats, been uh, uh, trying to uh, evacuate them from the spot and uh, they, uh, shift them to the higher areas. And uh, even this operation in uh, Tolichoki has been completed and uh, there the water logging has been cleared. But uh, at several places, and we have also clearly seen uh, roads have been turned into the ponds and uh, this uh, uh, bridges have been turned into the rivers and uh, the rivers which connects to the main parts of the uh, uh, city, Hyderabad city, are still underwater and the Musi River is flow overflowing from those bridges. We have also reported from that spot. It is yet to be uh, reviewed and uh, that those works are yet to be uh, uh, um, uh, taken up by the uh, uh, authorities and uh, they are making the alternate routes for the public to travel uh, from these spots and uh, government has also announced two days holidays that is today and tomorrow and uh, ask the public to not venture outside uh, uh, until it's an emergency. Okay, so people have been asked not to venture out. Of course, we are closely tracking the, you know, uh, predictions in the forecast, even by the Med Department, Shamit. But what about those who have been now rescued and evacuated? What's the kind of setup that the government has made, uh, you know, in relief camps? Because this is also a time of a pandemic. So there are extra precautions that will have to be taken. Well, exactly. They are being shifted to nearby centres and uh, the authorities, uh, the GH, the municipal authorities and the police officials are also asking them to maintain the social distancing norms in, the, in those centres and uh, they, are, uh, they are providing them uh, uh, food and uh, daily essentials uh, as of now. And uh, after, the, they are also, uh, we have spoke to the minister, uh, State Minister Talasani Srinivas Yadav has explained us what all the measures they have been taking uh, to evacuate the people and also ensure that water has been cleared. Uh, uh, from their residences. They are using all the machineries and uh, they are using uh, four major motors to drag the water out from that uh, Ramantapur area where the lake overflowed and uh, the water entered into their residences. They are using four major machineries to drag the water out, pull the water out and uh, 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 for as of now they have been shifted to uh, other centres, government centres and uh, the public have been kept there uh, for uh, time being and uh, daily essentials is also being provided to them and a uh, few other centres are also being set up for that thing and uh, even TSSP DCL is also taking up all the measures to ensure that uh power cut is not there because in in most affected areas like Amber Pet, in uh, Gagan Pahar, Shamshabad, and uh, uh, even in Saidabad, uh, these kind in these kind of areas, it's it's been over 10 hours and it, uh, they didn't even. Uh, see a single minute of power. Uh, so the TSSP DCL is also ensuring that uh, uh, the power resumes uh, to all the people and uh, all the works is being uh, done uh, uh, wherever uh, because uh, many, many, several trees are uprooted and uh, even they have fell on the transformers and the high tension wires and uh, where uh, the power cuts were started. 
In, indeed, uh, you know, that's one of the big challenges and many parts would have to still struggle. It will take some time for this power to be uh, fixed. Uh, power lines to be fixed. Ramit, thanks so much for bringing us these updates from ground there in Hyderabad. He's been reporting for us through the day. Let's say good evening to Dr. Gaur, former MP for TRS, joining me this evening. Srinivas Murthy, the architect and an urban designer, uh, also joins us this evening. And Mr. T.S. Sudhir, political analyst, uh, senior journalist, really, with us this evening. Uh, Dr. Gaur, if I could come to you first. Uh, We've never before seen this kind of a heavy rainfall. But should this also be taken as a wake-up call that our cities need to prepare as climates change and we see more and more such rounds of uh, unexpected heavy rainfall, we should be able to deal with it in a better and faster way? Yeah, definitely, Pandwiki. In fact, uh, your reporter has very clearly, very, it was so clear that uh, what has happened, what is happening, how the government is taking all the measures uh, that he explained, I'm happy about it. And you see that uh, the today's rain, the last 24 hours rain, it is in the, uh, the, this kind of the rain happened in 1980. It is like uh, after 100 years, uh, this kind of the rain, almost 31.9 centimeters rain, not millimeters, it's a centimeter rain, happened within 24 hours, within the limit space of the Hyderabad, but still, our CM was a proactive initially, he warned all the officials. Our Minister KTR Garo also is uh, on the field, actually. And, uh, our emergency rescue team is, in fact, well before that, uh, they were there. As you said, they, we are, our government is taking every possible step. The main thing is to prevent the loss of the life, reduce the uh, loss of the property, and also, most important, to immediate succor to the uh, uh, residents who are, uh, whose houses are affected by the flooding. So these three measures are they taking, that is a immediate for this. As you said, in the long term, already the, our government after the uh, Telangana state has been formed, uh, because when initially it was, uh, this capital was built for the uh, population of 5 lakh people, but now it is more than one core population. However, in the last six uh, years, we have been taking very, almost, uh, we have uh, with a 50,000 course budget in the last six years, uh, to seven years. We have been infrastructures, clearance of the Nalas, and uh, whatever the occupation of the Nalas, and occupation of the FTL, the rivers, because Hyderabad has got almost 100, uh, 130 lakes. Can you imagine? Hyderabad has got 130 lakes, which have been partly occupied in for the last 60 years. So we have been uh, doing everything possible, but the uh, immediate uh, thing, what is required for the people that has been uh, um, maintained by the government, and uh, you can see all the emergency things, including uh, the minister to the official to corporator to the uh, 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 electricity department to the emergency department. Everybody is there on the street. And the, particularly in the entire the Hyderabad out of which around seven to eight localities, which are low-lying localities, which are the flood flow areas, like Moose River. Our terrain, you know, Hyderabad is around 510 meters above the sea level. It goes, runoffs. So wherever the nalas are occupied, wherever the distributes are occupied, wherever the small tanks are occupied, that low-lying area is hampering the flow of the water. Right. We are, we have, the we have government has procured a lot of high-capacity uh, uh, missions to suck out the dry out the this excess flow of the water. Pandiji. Okay, do stay on with us, Dr. Gaur. Let me just bring in T.S. Sudhir. T.S. Sudhir, as I come to you, I was just looking and, you know, studying the setup uh, uh, of the city, the, uh, the the location, and why is it that it's prone to uh, such floods or deluge? Uh, the fact that there is Godavari River Basin on one side and the Krishna Basin on the other side, the fact that the entire Deccan region itself has a bit of a complicated drainage system, uh, and then there has been a lot of expansion and a lot of uh, construction and encroachment on fluid water bodies. Uh, if you can also, you know, uh, help us understand, is the city's planning really factoring in these kind of instances? 
Well, as uh, Dr. Gaud said, obviously this particular city was not built for such a population. But given the fact that like many other cities in the country, like Bengaluru, like Pune, the population of Hyderabad has also grown. The question is what lessons have been learned from similar instances in the past, like in 2016, like in 2019, when we had similar instances of very heavy rainfall, both in September and October whether lessons were really learned by the administration, the Hyderabad Municipal Corporation and the Telangana government to ensure that the kind of discomfort, the kind of problems that the people of Hyderabad face does not get repeated year after year, every September and October. Just to give you an example, in fact, let me go back to 2000 when Hyderabad faced a huge fury of floods. At that time, there was a Kirloskar committee which had gone into the reasons and they had identified over 13,000 encroachments in Hyderabad which needed to be removed in order to ensure that Hyderabad remains safe, does not get flooded. Now, what has been done since then? We have had the TDP government first, then the Congress government for a decade and then the TRS government since 2014. Now, the number of encroachments has increased in fact from 13,000 to nearly 30,000 encroachments. Nothing has been done to remove those encroachments because these are obviously with the municipal corporation and the political Maibab looking the other way. We have something called either a building regularization scheme or a mm. land regularization scheme, which essentially says that, okay, you can pay a penalty and the same uh, construction will become regularized. What happens is when these kind of flood fury, rain fury happens, the entire city of Hyderabad ends up paying a penalty because of a few people who are not removed. And trust me, nothing will happen as a result of what has happened in the last 24 hours because you have the municipal elections round the corner in the next three to four months. Not a single encroachment, I can bet, will be removed because all these are with the active connivance of either the local uh, political bosses or the municipal authorities. Oh, yes, absolutely. In fact, since you mentioned it, uh, let me just, you know, uh, read a few of the details of the Kirloskar committee. And this was after the floods of 2000. So it's been around for a really long time. Governments have come and gone. Uh, chief ministers have changed. Uh, th this current government has been here now for a long time. And still half of this is or more than that hasn't been done. In fact, situation has worsened. Over 2,700 illegal encroachments were found in the city Nalas, of which 1,400 had to be removed, was what was said back then, a long time ago. Nalas had to be widened. The drainage system in Twin Cities is inadequate. It is designed only for 12 millimeter rain per hour. And then they even went into naming certain areas, Srimulgari, Saifabad, Kacheguda, Begumpet, Charminar. Kukatpalli and Madhapur, amongst many others who will be in the danger and susceptible to severe water logging. And that's the question, Dr. Gao. If you can help us understand what is it that your government has done in all of this time that you've been in power? Uh, yes, you know, this problem has not suddenly erupted in the last time with the TRS government. It has happened over the period of so many decades. That is the fact that Sudhir also knows uh, very well. And uh, most of this happened after the government has come into the existence, Telangana was formed. Our focus has been trying to improve with a special emphasis on the Hyderabad infrastructure, drainage system, and also mobility and seamless mobility. Everything we are doing it. But as you said, the, regarding the question of the removing the encroachments, definitely we have done something. I don't say that we have done all the encroachments you know, there are many legal problems, so there are many states, many court uh, uh, interventions. So this has cropped over a period of 50, 60 years. And uh, what was the population was five lakhs. Now it is more than one per population. Definitely it needs to be done. And see, it, we have to uh, do a carrot and stick policy. The government is doing, trying to persuade the people, trying to remove the people, trying to give the alternate accommodation. That's why almost a lot of, uh, as you know, when the migration occurs from the rural area to the urban areas for the employment, the most of the poor and the lower middle class, they would look uh, trying to, uh, for the accommodation which is the nearest to their working place. And as you know, this is not only particular to Hyderabad city, that will be Bombay, Bangalore, Madras, anything. There is a partly a local uh, uh, conveyance will be there. But uh, as you said, so for 13,000 uh, structures need to be removed. In fact, we have tried four or five years back. There was a lot of court uh, interventions, a lot of stays on the particular interventions, and uh, some have been removed. Some have they got the court cases. As you know, this has to be done. 
and i don't think we have done everything and the it is a continuous process we will be trying to do whatever the best possible at the same time take it sensitive to the people's need especially the poor and lower middle class where they we they need to be given alternative no, I'm, accommodation no i'm sorry i dr god i disagree with you uh you you can't just simply blame it on migrants coming into the city or or our state requesting people and being sensitive to also what their needs are the responsibility of any government especially one that has been in power the one before you that was there for 10 years now you 6 over 6 years is to make long term plans and implement a better planning for the city now all, all we are looking at is the fact that hyderabad is consistently query very quickly now losing its wetlands and this was a report that also came out in 2016 a, a center for science and environment report that they said that the sta- sta- uh, urban w- water bodies are, are being lost that there is a significant encroachment of the water bodies that has happened that there has been no implementation of a master drainage plan uh, uh, that was actually desi- designed but never implemented the fact that the lakes aren't even properly cleaned up all kinds of industrial dump and other waste is d- uh, put in the in these lakes thereby taking away their capacity to hold any water now these are real problems which need urgent attention more than anything else otherwise we stare at a situation where when suddenly there is heavy rainfall and people are running from helter skelter even then you we should be sensitive to the uh, plight of the people the same people are now facing problems shrinivas murthy please come in here But why is it that city after city we see this problem is it complete apathy from the bureaucracy from the politicians or uh, do they don't have access to the experts bengaluru Chennai, Hyderabad, every city has the same problem. Uh, I think the problem here is definitely of uh, great amount of empathy towards problems which need long term solutions. These these are the problems which cannot be fixed on a short term on a day to day basis. It there has to be a strategic planning which should run over for years. Unfortunately, Indian cities at a very high level have failed to incorporate. a strategic planning towards natural disasters situations like flooding and water and specifically when we talk about hyderabad uh, i would like to correct you when you mentioned that there is a complicated drainage system but actually hyderabad is one city which is full of hills and slopes and lakes i mean uh, there are data which shows that there were about 3 to 4000 lakes in this region around this city and there were three big lakes which were made by the erstwhile rulers and there was a very beautiful system which they had evolved that all these lakes were interconnected using the natural topography of this region so that any kind of an overflow would keep connected through these nalas and ultimately go and meet in the river to musi and then it will further go down and meet into the bigger rivers but over the years as the city has grown there has been an an n number of encroachments on these connecting connections that would were established between lakes and also the nalas which were typically the connections between various lakes have been heavily encroached upon and there is no strategic plan as far as master plan of this city is concerned that how do you deal with these contoured city it is not so the master plan of this city looks like a flat land city like of a delhi or a jaipur no hyderabad needs to have a very specialized way of looking at it because it is full of mountains and hills and slopes and drainage and lakes and rivers so that is what is missing in this particular scenario uh, which is what surprises me that when you look at the lower lying areas which are typically the valley areas that is where you have gone ahead and proposed huge developments all you could have done is that made sure that these water carrying channels could have been preserved so that in case of such eventuality water finds its way to connect with each other and ultimately meet into the river so that is one of the big thing which i feel which is happening in hyderabad second as i said that there is definitely um, sudhir also has mentioned and i'm sure mr god would agree that there has been a huge amount of encroachment where again in master plan from a habitat design perspective there has not been thought given to that how do you re- why do you allow these encroachments first of all to take place i'm sure when musi river that husain sagar and usman sagar and himayat sagar all these three big lakes of the city when the flood gates would be opened they are already flowing into the river i don't i'm really you know shedding to think what's happening to people who had encroached these river banks and living there i mean they were definitely uh, encroachers because out of compulsion because city does not provide for a you know dignified living for them so obviously they would go and live where there is empty space 
but has there been a plan to reaccommodate them relocate them look after them in such scenarios uh, i really don't know what's happening because i am also seeing these visuals where musi river is now flooded with huge amounts of water uh, so that is another issue which you know the master plan is not really addressing and there has not been any consistent effort on part of the government to identify map them you know have a technically sound and uh, planning perspective brought in from different experts now this is another interesting thing which is happening in many cities across the country is that you are in this fancy of hiring consultants who are not belonging to your city from other cities they don't understand the city the way the local people would understand so why is it that the local consultants local architects local planners are not involved in such projects and so there is a huge musi river front development and we don't know what's happening to it what is the plan for it does it mean that they are going to allow it to Uh, carry water, or will it be de-dredged and you know increase the depth so that the excess water can be available? So we are not aware of any such program, and it's like a big secret program which has been you know propagated. And of course, consultants are all from outside Hyderabad. I don't even know how many of them really understand Hyderabad in that sense. Another very interesting aspect which we find is this whole you know felling of trees when it heavily rains. We must understand why do trees fall because there are electrical poles which are in that whole line and you are allowing them hundreds and hundreds of wires being kept on them and because of this wind pressure and the rain the wires weigh very heavily the the street lights and the poles they bend they fall on the trees impact the whole thing why is it that over the years people have not been able to think about an underground cabling system uh, this is another interesting aspect which many people would like to un- know from the government that why we do we have to cut trees every rainy season why can't we look for a long term solution for that and lastly i have seen in the last 2 3 days when i was going around the cities there is also i mean which is very sad i had never expected that these things happen but the poor drainage workers because of whatever limitations they have but i saw them pushing the garbage actually into the drain not really collecting them and putting them into the trucks that would carry them out so i am right now pretty surprised that we always wake up in the last minute and try to address this mega problems which actually have to be thought through for years and implementation has to be very consistent and it has to be technically correct that it looks after the whole ecosystem of urban development urban growth not just right. that you look at it as making yes, of flow you know, channels and allowing water to go so in my opinion there is a lack of awareness lack of you know you have a very valid point there mr murthy of ecosystem you also have an interesting point that you made about you know the the the, the experts and consultants are often brought from outside the city those who don't really understand the city as well but even if we get anybody and then we make these plans and then we make these reports mr sudeep uh, and then we don't do anything with it like you said reports that have been you know uh, eating dust for decades now and master plans that are made committees that come and go and nothing happens trs may be right in saying that this didn't happen overnight previous governments uh, also looked the other way but for 6 years for a government is also a long time for any party uh we see still see uh, no indication of any kind of long term planning uh, would you agree well uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for the trs government to actually make a difference yes obviously all these things did not happen overnight the encroachments did not happen overnight it has been happening over a period of time and including in the last 6 years just to give you two quick points for instance during the lockdown period a lot of money was actually spent in recarpeting the roads because obviously there was no traffic during the lockdown period so the greater hyderabad municipal corporation utilized the time to recarpet many of those roads how many storm water drains and the entire drainage system was actually desilted to ensure that what happened today did not happen that's essentially the problem because the roads when you see a nice glitzy black top it is seen as a vote catching measure because citizens including all of us feel happy at the sight of a smooth road unfortunately drainage system storm water drains are not seen as sexy vote catching ideas which is why enough investment is not done on those kind of things so the priorities of the government of the local municipal administration has to really be correct and if that had been done we wouldn't have seen these kind of scenes today the second point in fact i would like to take uh, everyone back to 2016 in 2016 when the chief minister k chandrashekhar rao was asked whether action will be taken against municipal officials 
who gave the go ahead to the construction of over 28000 encroachments many of them in the uh, in the years between 2014 and 2016 and that prevented the flow of water into the musi river kcr replied and this is important he said that if he were to take action against corrupt staff not a single officer will be left in the greater hyderabad municipal corporation so that coming from the chief minister no less gives you an idea about what the chief minister himself thought right. about the kind of corruption that is there in the municipal corporation speak to anyone in hyderabad they will tell you greater hyderabad municipal corporation is not just ghmc it's also greater hyderabad mamul commission that's a kind of respect unfortunately the ghmc commands in the city of hyderabad Well, Mr. Sudhir, I, I, as unfortunate as it is, and that is the reality, and not just the reality of Hyderabad. Unfortunately, we are seeing more and more cities just have similar problems from corrupt officials to apathetic officials to bad planning or no planning at all. Uh, and year after year, we see our cities, you know, in in a state of a deluge. I thank all of our guests for joining us right now, viewers. Yes. Hyderabad and many parts of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh saw unprecedented rainfall. Yes, uh, in fact, for Hyderabad, it's ne been never been this heavy in 24 hours as it was this time around. But our cities are growing and expanding without any due diligence being done on what will be the plan for such heavy rainfall. The drainage systems, the water bodies surrounding areas, the unabated. Uh, uh, encroachment and expansion that takes place simply because there is an excess that exists between greedy builders and politicians and your officials. At some point, something has to change. Perhaps this is the moment for the TRS government to wake up and say, enough is enough. We are going to now start bringing about a change. Thank you for joining us on conversation number one.